So Romario, how is the Orlando real estate market doing? Well, this is the monthly answer to that question. So we're looking over the month of August, inventory up 6.9% month over month. We're cracking into the 6,000s now, and we're down 9.6% year over year. Kind of funny how the numbers are inverted there. Not really funny, I'm just a nerd. But this is really interesting because August 2022 interest rates were at 5.9%, as you can see by this graph here. And as of last month, the average interest rate was 6.58%, as you can see here. So not to beat a dead horse, we've already talked about the lock-in effect, but it's kind of funny to see how higher interest rate, less inventory, it's not necessarily an attractive thing to leave what most 90% of homeowners having an interest rate below 5%, leaving that to jump into today's market is not the sexiest thing ever. And so you see that reduced inventory. However, new listings are up 6.1%, but down as you see 20% since last year. So I think it's still good though that we are tracking up in new listings, giving more options to buyers. I've already stressed that enough here. And I can see that trend continuing. I don't know to the exact extent that it will, but it's normal to see inventory increase over Q3, Q4 of the year. Going downward, new contracts are down month over month, 8.7%, down year over year also 21.9%. Our total pendings are down as well, 4.2% and 12.6% year over year. Closed sales down, not by much, a little bit over 2% month over month, but down much further year over year. Of course, the seasonality of the real estate market plays into this, but also affordability, it's a real issue. It is certainly not the most affordable time to purchase a home right now. Now there are avenues that my clients are taking that plenty of other people are taking to get into home ownership and make it a much better environment, whether that's sticking to new construction and soaking up those incentives right now because of where interest rates at, which is currently well into the seven, 7.6 as I checked today. Or if you're buying resale, you're looking at the homes that are staying on the market for an extended period of time. You're not looking at the ones that just popped on on the market. You're trying to get those that are 90 days, 60 days, 100 plus days on market market to get more off price, get concessions, to do buy downs, to take care of your closing costs. Or the last option that not a lot of people like to do and I completely understand is adjust your expectations on the type of home that you will be looking at. A lot of people, especially when they start to do the comparison game with what happened in 2021, where it's like, oh, I could have bought a $600,000 house. Now I'm looking at homes that are 450, which can drastically change the type of home in some areas. 600 in Horizon West is a a single family home in the low fours that's a town home for sure so i completely understand that being a jarring thing and something that might cause you to step out of the home buying journey and take a pause. But anyway, moving down to the average price, we are up 0.6% month over month, up 3% year over year, down on the median though, 1.3% month over month and down 0.7% year over year. That year over year difference is so uh, minimal. It's pretty much like $2,000. And so granted that interest rates were 5.29% at that time, I certainly don't think there are a lot of people who regret buying compared to right now. I always challenge people and advise you to look at the early or real estate market specifically in a more nuanced manner. For example, you wouldn't probably believe me if I told you there are neighborhoods right now requesting that you bid on lots for new bills because of the demand that they're having in that specific community. Communities that have super long waiting lists are selling like 20 homes in a day. But guess what? There are also neighborhoods in Orlando that are slow, that aren't seeing as high of a demand. And so the Windermere market can look different from the Davenport market, which also can look different from the Winter Haven market. That's also different from the Claremont market. You get what I'm saying? We're looking at general data, but do realize that certain markets are performing better than others rant over. Average days on market are up two days from 39 days to 41 days. So we're not doing too bad. A little bit over a month to sell your home. Days to close 75, which has remained constant. And we're a little bit over two months on I felt like I didn't say a little bit, a little bit over two months of months of supply. All in all, we're doing pretty good here in Orlando. Nothing crazy out of bounds to report. So I can't do like those guys on YouTube that are like the crash bros. I can't put 40%, 50% crash in the next three months just doesn't make sense for our market. And by the way, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Orlando, I'd be honored to partner with you as your real estate agent. So feel free to reach out to me. All my information will be in the description down below. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Pew, pew, pew. Pound. Love you. Bye.